find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Happy 2015 is the first awesome cast of the year. Ready to talk geeky, talk tech. It's Mike Sorg here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Alone-ish, alone-ish. Wife of the show's here <laughs> hanging out. Uh, I, I told everybody to stay home. It's a little blustery out there. Uh, so all the regulars are in their warm, warm places. Um, so, so you know, not not breathing, breathing it out there. With me uh, on the line uh, not too far away is Chilla at Chilla on Twitter. John Chilla, how you doing, sir? Pretty good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Your holiday treats you well, sir? Yes, it did. It looked like you had a fun one. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get into a little bit of that here in a moment. Uh, also joining us, and I can I tell, are you up in? Are you up in Newcastle there, or are you, you local? Did you get back? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm in a remote bunker. Remote bunker. <laughs> remote wood paneling yeah. bunker, apparently. Uh, I'm actually in the village of Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Katie Dudas is with us at Dutters on the Twitters. Um, join us again. How was your holiday? Oh, good. I did some adventuring, too, so there. I, I heard. I heard. We'll, we'll, we'll wasn't compare as notes. Co- wasn't as cool as yours, but, you know. Oh, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> um, anyways, this is the awesome cast uh, for January 6, 2015. And you can join us We're at awesomecast.net for show notes, places you can subscribe to us, including YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. And also, we have a lot of product picks there. If we talk about it on the show, I try to put a link over on Amazon. Uh, so you can, if you can buy it through there, if you want to pick something up. Um, I know Cindy picked something up last month that we had talked about. People have been asking me about this battery that I've been using uh, that survived the mosh pit at the Gathering the Juggalos. That's up there too um but uh but anything you can pick up there helps out the show of course and of course links to our patreon and everything if you want to support the show that way uh check us out on twitter at awesome cast notice the new graphics i was inspired by one of the visits i made this weekend um so at awesome cast if you're on the videos right there uh facebook google plus look for us there as well and you can also drop us an email if anything about the show if you have an awesome thing of the week you want to share awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com or you can join us in the chat room at live.awesomecast.com or uh, so live.sorgatronmedia.com as well about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm so sensitive to actually saying the time zone now um, after my trip out west. Uh, and you can join us in the chat room and, and become a part of the show there. And we might be doing some fun stuff with the chat room here in the near future here. We're going to test something out on the Mayhem show tonight. So uh, so let's get right into it with our awesome things of the week. Who wants to go first? Chilla's Chilla, talking about unicorns, so you should Chilla, go first. Let's, let's get your unicorn out of the way. Let's, let's get your... Sasquatch. So mine, actually, I had like 18 different things today with CES going Jeez. on and, barely, and all the different stuff I'm that was announced there. Barely keeping but, up with it. Yeah, but it, it, and then at the very end of the day, I was I was reading 9 to 5 Mac, and there was an article, Apple's next major Mac revealed the radically new 12-inch MacBook Air. Now... It's funny because the way they wrote, it's definitely clickbait because they're like, oh, it's revealed. But, oh, but no, it, it, it really isn't. It's they're revealed ish. It's real ish. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, they're saying an internal prototype has been revealed um, or leaked. And I, I honestly think if you look at this device, so it's the 12 inch, which falls that currently they offer the 11 and the 13. This 12 inch is actually physically going to be smaller than the 11 inch okay but the screen is is a 12 inch screen so it's it's going to be tiny and if you're watching ces there was a i think it was a dell today um that was that was talked about where they shrunk the bezel so small that it's like a 14 or 15 inch dell and it if you sat it on top of a 13-inch MacBook Air, it's smaller physically than a 13-inch MacBook Air, but I think it's a 15-inch display screen. Um, but 
The interesting thing about what they're claiming that Apple is going to do is they're pretty much removing every port. No, no MagSafe power. What? No, no USB. No SD card. You're going to get a headphone jack, the stereo microphone, and a, the new, and we've seen Apple do this before, you're going to get the new USB Type-C, which falls in a, which is the replacement that they've already, that they've already announced the new USB is going to be like lightning where it's reversible. Wow. And it can not only support data transfer, but it can drive display. So with this, we're going back to almost the look of the original air that the jobs had kind of brought on a stage where it had the flip flip out thing yeah. for the headphone jack and one USB port. Um, and the power was kind of up and under the actual um, back end. But I'm going to it's interesting because when they put the two of them side by side, it actually is thinner than overall. The whole thing is thinner than the bottom half of a current MacBook Air. Oh, jeez. So, so Can you wait? Can't, can't wait for the new <laughs> Ben gate, right? Right. Which I'm a little nervous about the keys because they had to kind of squish the keys together. But there, I will say there's more space on my MacBook Air keyboard between keys than there is on my Bluetooth keyboard. Mm -hmm. So um, I see I could see why they did that to save to shave down space. Um, But I'm thinking if this is the next Air, I might picking it up <laughs> I'm trying to decide on my next laptop and, yeah and this I'm, I'm four years and and you don't need anything years. heavy duty right I mean you I mean you're basically doing programming stuff like this this is fine for you yeah I'm doing some programming stuff I'm doing some some Photoshop type stuff I'm doing light light video yeah um keeping in mind that even my Mac my MacBook Air today is is an i7 um with four gig of RAM and, yeah. and because of the SSD, I mean, I'm running virtual machines on here. I've, I run Android. On so you're going to, you're going to stress that at least a little bit. Yeah, I'll stress it out, but I mean, I don't have any major issues today. Mm-hmm. And, and if I need to, unlike you, if I need to render a video, I can just set it and forget it. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not on a time crunch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there's been many a time where I've set, set up video to, to compress or render and it, I, it just runs overnight. You just walk away. Uh, uh yeah, walk. especially on that level. Um, I, I, I'm really amazed cause I still have the old, uh, the Mac mini, the i five sitting upstairs and I, I tried to do a project, uh, just a real quick. I'm like, ah, it's sitting on the drive here. I might as well try to load it up. And it just, just wasn't having any of it. Um, so I just brought it down to the new, the new MacBook. And just I think the SSD is what makes for me what makes the difference. Definitely. Well, well for me, it, it's it's not just the SSD because it's um, you know I have so many drives hooked up to, mm-hmm. so I'm working off the same drives. But but again, probably the program loading and everything is probably better too. So I so 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 we'll we'll look out for your little unicorn here uh, and see Ooh. what happens here. Uh, <laughs> but no, I can see it. it, it it's kind of uh, you know goes along. Like you said, with like the the Apple Vision, right? Uh, for something simpler, and let's be honest, most people, this is fine for, right? Yeah. So, and and I'm interested too. Did they let this? Was this one of those? Could it be a leak? Or are they trying to get feedback <laughs> on? Is are people going to go irate over? There's no ports on it. Yeah. But when I look around, when I look around at the, so USB-C is obviously past, faster than USB-3, and they'll be, they've are, the USB Alliance Consortium has already announced that, you know, there'll be converter cables, and there'll be all kinds of stuff for that. But when I look around at my desk, everything I have is pretty much wireless. You will not. I can tell you this. Oh, it's wireless. Okay. 
wireless. So like my like my phone syncs wirelessly, my Android device syncs wirelessly. Actually, all three of my Android devices sync wirelessly. My iPad syncs wirelessly. The only time I usually use the USB port is when I'm charging something. I even have, and it's not sitting here, it's in my bag for work. I have a um, terabyte hard drive that has a four hour battery in it. So I can turn it on and connect to it and use it with no problem. Um, so I'm thinking that even if you just had one hard drive that you wanted to connect up, the mm -hmm. type C connector and a converter would be fine. Um, I think there you're going to see some kind of hub, almost like they do the Thunderbolt docks. Um, and I'm, I'll be interested to see the price point. But when I look at everything I have today, the one port, I mean, I have, I have two ports, two USB ports on my existing device. And most of the devices, like the Surface Pro, there's one USB port. You need more to get a thumb hub. I don't know. So I'm, I'm interested to see, did they leak this to try to get feedback on, is the one port going to be enough? It, it, nothing would surprise me, especially with, you know, Apple these days, uh, if that's what they're doing. You know, other companies have been known to do something like this. So, sure, you know. So looking forward to it. Katie, what do you got? Oh, guess what I've been doing since the first of the year? Uh, friends, and friends on Netflix. What? Friends. Oh, the series yeah. Friends on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, uh, Netflix officially has every episode of Friends on there now. Wow. And the best part about it is you could just sit and watch the whole series without having to go play, play, play. So you can really just binge watch Friends for days. And I, I'm up to the end of season three. So I'm doing pretty well. So it's pretty exciting for me. Uh, the funniest thing, I've been watching it, and the technology in it is amazing. So this is, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I think, now, a lot of these episodes, mm. especially early on, and, and just, like, the, the things that they're doing. Uh, there's one episode where uh, Chandler and um, Ross were setting up their alumni profile pages uh, on, on a computer that's massive, of course. It's a laptop that's about this thick. And the way you could go in was you just, this is how they connected, was they connected, corrected this um, um, alumni page. So they were updating their profiles, which was the only way they could connect with each other, which was kind of pre-Facebooky thing. Um, Chandler had a girlfriend online that he started talking to, a sh cyber chick. When it was so her. taboo back then. And they used cyber. That's yeah. amazing. It was a cyber chick. Yeah, they were like, You're, you don't even know this girl. She could be anything. And, and then they were throwing out the HH, the holding hands. <laughs> And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, saw a pager. Got to see a pager again. That was fun. Oh, uh, you VHS mean tapes. you mean like one of these that I yeah. found in a random bag before I left that's for a, California? One too. Look at that. It's like pink. It's like purple pinkish. Oh, Look at that. I, I don't. I still can't figure out which one of my roommates was a drug dealer, but uh, <laughs> you know, I have some suspects. You know. <laughs> but anyways. But I think I think the biggest revelation I took away from watching the show thus far is how important the answering machine was. It was the hub of everything, and I completely forgot about how important it was to everybody keeping track of each other and making plans and, and connecting. Because obviously they're not really using cell phones, especially the first couple seasons. Right. It's like the answering machine <laughs> with tapes, not digital tapes. Well, that's like one of the things that I that I've heard people say about Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Every issue in Seinfeld could have been fixed with or remediated with a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. There's, there's so many apps that will uh, uh, solve a lot of those problems. Like like uh, the one where they were waiting for a table at a Chinese restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, there's a, we have how many apps for that right now, right? Or getting a taxi mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, certainly. Crowdcom has been having some pretty good commercials, speaking of, of apps for ordering food oh yeah oh yeah yeah i yeah, saw some yeah. of those over the break yeah they, they've been they've been coming out with some pretty funny ones so. i'm pretty impressive um awesome uh so so uh friends you can go check that out um well, i haven't been on netflix in a few days you know I, on that <laughs> note hulu actually has had an interesting series of commercials uh that i'm watching on hulu 
So I don't know if they're playing anywhere else or anything, but they're having a lot of like, like again, like the I found this series kind of stuff where I discovered this series and uh, and maybe I watched it with my dad back in the day or I never got into it and stuff. Like there was even one for re- for like a, a, a wrestling fan. It says, I watch WWE. I'm not a wrestling fan. I'm a WWE fan. And they have like Raw and SmackDown. And uh, I've been binging Total Divas with my wife actually on Hulu Plus. Um, but, uh, but no, it's been, it, it, again, kind of like the, the Grubhub. I think theirs was a little, like theirs was kind of fun stuff. Uh, but, you know, kind of that like, hey, this is the, this is the, these are the people like there's always that question: Who uses Hulu? Why would you use Hulu when you can do this with cable or this with Netflix or something? And they're like these are the people, you know. Um, so re- really interesting to see them kind of reaching out that kind of like Hulu culture kind of idea. So um, as we mentioned, uh, we was a little bit of venturing over the holidays. Uh, I went to California. Um, I'm not going to talk so much. You know, I, I I'll probably I'm so aware of plane technology now. By the way. And so uh, maybe I can I can uh, lend to some conversations there. Um, so so honorable mention for the Southwest uh, Traveler Travel Tracker. I was like checking that like the entire way. You can see where your plane is and the altitude and everything. Um, and we were also very fortunate because I don't know if it was like a limited time over the holidays or something, but they actually had live TV. Like you bring your own tablet and they will stream live TV in a select number of channels uh, on the plane. So. Uh, but the big thing from the trip, uh, I actually got to visit uh, Twit Studios this week in tech. Um, kind of the big, I don't know, I think it's one of the most successful podcast networks uh, since since today, uh, since the beginning of podcasting. Um, but they got a big million dollar studio over there in Pataluma, California. We were staying about an hour away, so we got to go and attend a Mac break uh, nice. taping. Uh, and it was great because the new it was the day before New Year's Eve, so everybody for the most part was in studio. So it was like Leo was there, uh, Leo Laporte was there, uh, Alex Lindsay was there, who recently, by the way, just moved you know back to Pittsburgh a, a little bit ago. Um, the guy from Imore, why can't I remember his name? Uh, the guy from Canada. Uh, oh, um, Renee Ritchie. Renee Ritchie, thank you. He was there. I was actually watching the New Year's. He was he was showing uh, some Taekwondo or jujitsu actually to to Leo uh, on the New Year's uh, uh, stream. Uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out, uh, check out their New Year's stuff. I mean, it, it, they have it like hour by hour. They did like twenty four hour podcasting, uh, streaming, uh, and and checked in and 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 you know did some fun stuff over over the time. Had a lot of their hosts from all over flown in. Um, and, and raised like seventy thousand dollars for UNICEF, which was incredible. Um, wow. Shaved heads, got shaved tattoos. heads, got tattoos, <laughs> everything, everything. Uh, so it was really cool to kind of check in every once in a while and watch that. Um, I'm really sorry I couldn't get back over there and, and, and attend it a little bit in person. Um, but it was really cool. Uh, you, know, you know, it was usually they had like they had like twelve people, and I know they were like blown away that so many people showed up. But you know, again with the timing and everything. Um, so, uh, really kind of see it really just kind of, you know, awe inspiring to see their, their kind of setup. Um, although it's like not, it's weird because I, I followed this for so long. Like I remember when they were at the cottage and everything, and it's kind of our view. If you guys are on video, um, I have pictures over on my Facebook. Um, this was interesting. They, they actually have, cause there's, there's cameras hanging, um, throughout the studio. So they're just kind of up out of the way. Um, and they had like sheep and monkeys and stuff uh, just kind of hanging from from them. Uh, presumably so you don't run into them. And, and and here's the other thing: all they use are Canons, higher end, but but they're Canon cameras, but they're the hard drive cameras or the flash cameras, and they just uh, HDMI out of them. So they're not running like crazy, super expensive cameras all over the place. Which they have like I don't even, probably like twenty cameras all over the place. Um, here you see one stuck in the back of a teleprompter. Uh, for for uh, checked out the end of tech news today with uh, Mike Elgin. So, um, and there's a actually here's a view uh, if you haven't seen it yet. And, and if you want to see again, it, it was kind of like I was familiar walking into it because you can actually go on their site and they did an internal street view, so you can go in and walk around Twitch Studios and check it out yourself. From and they have they have I don't know if you mentioned it they have they have a couple drop cams in there. Yeah, they also. They're yeah. on the public drop cam. Yeah, I remember they were looking at the drop cans after that last big earthquake, and they were trying to figure out, because like, they looked in like Leo's one office where he has the exercise ball and stuff, and they saw it moving, and they saw the light flicker and everything. 
Um, but it's pretty cool. And actually, like if you look here, like you know, Mac break was happening at this table here if you're on video, and they just set up chairs like you see them there. Um, uh, and, and in the center of the entire thing, and this is the coolest thing um, for me on the production side. They have a, a, a TriCaster, which is kind of the a pretty standard on, on this level of broadcasting um, uh, kind of setup. Kind of think what I do with Wirecast here, but on a way, way bigger scale. Uh, I actually got to work a little bit with the well, I didn't work on it, but we had a TriCaster in some of the wrestling uh, productions we did up in Cleveland. Um, but this whole thing spins. So basically they have a set on, on either side, and this whole command center just kind of turns towards whichever set they're working with at the time. Um, really cool setup. It was, it was, you know me, I'm the guy that goes to WWE Raw, and I'm, I'm watching all the camera monkeys run around and doing stuff so it's kind of cool to uh watch them you know as they're switching and and pulling up uh graphics and everything here uh in these shots so that's kind of my big like tech insanity that happened uh while i was out in california um so it, it was a pretty fun trip it was something different I, i've never been that far away uh let alone uh more than one time zone away and uh needing to take a plane for instance uh, but it, it was a lot of fun. And I recommend if anybody's in the East Coast, or I'm sorry, on the West Coast, and, and they're uh, within driving distance of uh, maybe like, what, an hour uh, north of uh, San Francisco, uh, they're very open. They say, hey, let us know. We'll put a chair out for you. You know, there's uh, tickets at Twit TV, I think. Um, it's, it's a really cool experience to see kind of like how, what they built that place up to. Um, um, and I don't even know how, how many podcasts they do at this point. And, and these are guys, uh, uh, Alex and, and uh, Leo are, are guys that I've watched from all the way back on ZDTV, Tech TV, you know, on screensavers. So it's really cool to kind of, you know, finally, of course, you know, Alex, we've actually had here in PodCamp Pittsburgh one nearly 10 years ago. Um, um, so it was really cool to see that. So, um, so you mean WordPress camp? Yeah, I kind of said, Leo, stop. <laughs> Leo, please stop saying WordPress camp. I, I actually I finally got to be like, Leo, please stop saying WordPress camp. <laughs> um, but um, anyways, uh, also I had fun. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw my little video here. Um, my, my, my robot in, in San Francisco I had a little bit of fun with. So I'm trying to use my phone more to do video. And, uh, and this was my trip through the robot's eyes. So you can check that out. It's actually over on my post today on the Good Morning Podcast at uh, Sorgatron.com if you want to check out that whole thing. So, all right, uh, Katie, you got an app of the week? Yes, I do. Uh, it is uh, TV Cast. Where did he go? Sorry, I lost my page. <laughs> I have a lot of things going on over here. It's okay. <laughs> um, the cat TV wants cast, to use uh, the cat wants to use a stand. I understand. Uh, we've been playing fetch. I don't think you if you've seen me go off camera every so often, it's because I'm grabbing a hair tie and tossing it because she plays fetch. Oh, geez. She thinks she's a dog. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the one I, I, I'm recently checking out is called TV cast mm -hmm. uh, with an iPhone. There are times when I want to cast things on my phone that aren't necessarily a YouTube video or a Netflix video. Um, it enables you to essentially cast any link that you put in there. You can Google search the link or type it in yourself or copy and paste it, however you feel, and then you can cast it using uh, Chromecast onto your screen, which was kind of neat for me because um, some, it just, there's nothing, it was clunky, it's clunky to try to put videos that aren't necessarily, like, like I said, Netflix onto your screen where there's not the apps for them yet. And this pretty much puts up anything that um, you, you type in on the link. I, I did try to sneak around um, with Xfinity to see if I could get them to cast that way, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it caught me. But um, yeah, so it's all, it's called TV Cast, and I think it's it, it's pretty cool. Like I said, if you, you're looking to cast something that's not YouTube or Netflix, is it um it TV Cast or officially video and TV Cast? I'm wondering. Uh, well, it's video and TV Cast is what yeah. it's called, but I think the app when you search for it, I always put TV Cast. It's video and TV Cast. Oh, and you need to put a space in there. This is complicated. Two Kit Consulting. There it is. It's, I found it. All right, we'll drop that in, and you see, like, you just like drop a URL in. Is it? Is, does mm -hmm. it seem to be like trying to find video on the page or something like the like in, and pushing the like that feed out? Does it? You seem can actually um, any link, like if it's you, it, it's almost like viewing the web page on on like the Chromecast. So whatever okay. you're doing on your phone, um, you could if there's a video on the page, it doesn't necessarily start playing right away. You have to go in and hit play, but so it'll show you it's what you're like, seeing on that link. Is it kind of like it's cropping around the video and displaying that bit? 
Uh, it's it's actually the whole page. Like you, like it would be oh, the mobile version cool. of the page. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's casting what you see on your phone on the screen, and then you just go down and hit play on the video or whatnot. So you can actually look. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a video, but okay. um, it could be just a site you want to look at. Okay. Okay. So it's not. Okay. So it's full on. Oh, that's mm -hmm. going to be really nice. Mm -hmm. So it's a full web browser, basically. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, I've been playing with it. That's what it seems to be doing. It sounds like uh, I had a very similar one uh, called Web Out that I needed to, mm -hmm. to push a web page out to. Uh, one of the dongles to push to HDMI, and uh, it, it seems like a kind of similar concept just for Chromecast, I guess. So cool! I, it, 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 you know, of course, Android luckily has you can cast everything. Like when if you upgrade yeah. to Android Five, like it, the cast button is right there on the top of settings. Um, so I, I haven't experimented with it yet, though. Uh, but um, cool that we can get a little bit of that functionality over on the. Uh, it's free. Go check it out. Video and TV yep. cast. Make sure you got spaces in there, and it'll come up. And it's a little blue icon for you guys on audio uh, to help you out there. So, um, they, and it mostly comes up by itself, so I don't think there's any confusion there. So, awesome. Thanks, Katie. So, uh, let's give a shout out to our friends in the new year. Hey, it's uh, uh, maybe you guys like your sports ball here in the Pittsburgh area. And, sports ball. And, and, and there's a big sports ball super uh, bowl thing. Uh, happening soon, and you want a pizza? Hey, slice on Broadway is pretty good, and 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 they're, they're they're good they're good pizza they're good pizza they're good people, and uh, they're over here in the South Hills in Pittsburgh as well as over in Carnegie, PA, uh, and the main drag over there. Uh, check them out. They had a I should pull up their Instagram here. They had the uh, uh, they made a pizza field goal sign for that last Steelers game, um, but go check them out. SliceonBroadway.com. Follow them on Twitter. Follow them on Facebook, follow them on the Instagrams, and tell them the awesome cast is where you heard about them. And uh, help support uh, some good pizza people that are supporting good podcasting here in Pittsburgh. So they're award-winning, guys. They, they, they're they on the walls. They're like best pizza in Pittsburgh and, and stuff like that. Um, I think it says right there on their site, actually. Yes, 2012, Pittsburgh's best pizza. Um, so please go check them out and tell them you heard about them on the awesome cast. So we need they to even have old paddles up on our walls. Yeah, they do. They, I, I think it's totally cool. They retired <laughs> what, pizza paddles. They're retired pizza paddles that they, you know, the big wooden paddles that they pull the pizzas out. And this is doesn't say like served so many thousands of pizzas mm -hmm. or something on that. Uh, really cool. And they got a good sense of humor. They, you'll their 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 uh, Facebook page is very much food porn. Um, so if you like that kind of stuff, hop in there. So chilla. We need to check in on some stuff here. Um, we, uh, of course, I, I, I understand your experiment has been a little more uh, turbulent than mine. <laughs> well, and, and it's it's only because I'm I'm unfortunate with the fact that so I cannot see. Okay, let, 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 let's let's roll this back because people just keep people up to speed here. So we made a trade here before the holidays uh, at that last show here in the awesome cast uh, in the studios. Uh, he, I gave up my Google Glass to Chilla. I surrendered it to him, um, and, uh, and 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 in in exchange, amongst a couple other things, I got a Pebble Watch. So. Um, an iPad and stuff, which the, the dude, the iPad, I forgot how much I missed the iPad. <laughs> I missed an iPad. I missed a functional because I took, I took with me on this trip, my phone, my Nexus seven and my iPad. And I got to do most everything on the iPad and it was amazing. And even like that little bit of, yeah, it's kind of nice. Like when I'm sitting there, uh, watch, you know, reading, on the Nexus 7 comic books, but that iPad mm -hmm. just looks so good. It looks so good. Um, but the Pebble Watch, well, first let's go back. What, what is your issue happening with Google Google Glass right now? So, so one, um, we didn't have frames for you. I'm sorry about that. Well, but, no, but you weren't going to use okay. them anyways. So it, It's actually, it, it, it worked out well because I actually got frames right from Google. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Um, but I didn't have time to pick up lenses. So my thought process sure. was, and keeping in mind we're over the Christmas holiday, I don't like getting my picture taken without glasses on. Right. Um, so, and knowing that the battery life wouldn't last, whatnot, um, through a whole 
18 hour a day. Um, I was hoping that I could take the glasses and literally put them over my glasses mm -hmm. um, for when I wanted to use them. The problem is that my frame ends up directly in line with the glass screen right. on the inside of the, on the inside of the glass. So um, I did recently get contacts. That's working out well. The, the funny part is, is I am so blind that without contacts or glasses on, um, and I can kind of like prop it up, or actually, I'm sorry, prop it down so I can see um, the. I can't see the inside of the glass screen without glasses on, right? Without contacts, in. right? Because it, because it does look far away, right? Because it, it's very it's emulating whatever your focus would be to see the picture all the way out here, several feet away. I, I think right. I said it's like putting a uh, what a twenty inch TV. Uh, three feet away from you or something like that, right? Or whatever that math is. So it mm -hmm. is as if you're looking there. That's why it works and doesn't give you as much of a headache as it probably should uh, because you're really kind of like your focus is actually shifting to it, um, which again causes a problem for us with glasses, right? Exactly. But the one thing that I will say I'm impressed with, and this is going to be a hard item to explain over non-video, um, and maybe you can help explain what you're seeing. It it's looks like, like you a have a pod. yeah, you have a pod with a zipper. It looks like I, I have a pod with a zipper, and I would say it's probably five inches wide by eight inches um, in height, and probably about four inches deep. This is actually the glasses case oh, wow. for Google Glass. Well, isn't the the glasses case? Like they don't bend, right? Like they're yeah, just... they don't they don't bend. So you so can't really no, there's no give. It's there's just no arm, giant kind of flexible piece, just like that initial thing is. So you can't fold up the Google Glass glasses and store them, Correct. which I think is a design problem, a little bit. I, I I think it is a bit of a design problem, but in the grand scheme of things, it does. They, they did a good job designing the case. Right. In fact, it actually has the screwdriver in a little um, elastic band in there as well. So you can connect and disconnect the glass from the frame if you would want to flip flop to other to either the band or, or to another set of frames or, or whatever. Um, but for now, I'm going to use contacts for a while, and I think I'm going to go. I, I have to check to make sure I can get my lenses into here, um, which I don't think will be a problem. But I, I will say experimenting with the apps has been, has been nice, and the interface on the iPhone has been completely impressive as far as we, we were talking earlier. I can not only sync to Google+, Plus but I can sync to the Photos app on the iPhone, which for Google to go that extra distance, um, I think says a lot about trying to get to any, um, to anybody that wants to use Glass. To me, to me that's huge. Um, Obviously, it requires Bluetooth. So it requires Bluetooth connection to Glass and personal hotspot to transfer photos or connect Glass with your phone to the same Wi-Fi network. Um, and it says right the option is save photos taken on Glass to the Photos app. Um, so I, I've been the, – the app – actually, the other thing that, that I wanted to say is the app – Google's doing a very good job of making their apps all look – uniform so the interface you you know how to use it immediately right from the chromecast app to the glass app to to their other apps it to me is it's very impressive what they're doing with the with material design and using the same interface across all their apps nice so so your pebble what do you think about the pebble um this is the right thing for me <laughs> <laughs> uh i uh it's it's been a really interesting experiment like right off the bat it, it it took care of the thing that i enjoyed glass for which there wasn't a solution for this at the time when glass came out 
really. I, I think what Pebble was probably just releasing at the time, maybe. Um, but mm-hmm. that idea that I don't need to, again, your phone stays in your pocket um, as an extension. You know, I'm not, you know, fiddling with my phone when if I feel it in my pocket. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm leaving my phone on silent, like like on night mode, because I realize all the notifications come to this thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it kind of gives me a little better. Also, also, you realize all the junk notifications that you're just going to automatically turn off. Like, I don't need Plants vs. Zombies 2 that I haven't played in like a month to let me know about an update uh, <laughs> on my watch, right? But I definitely want this WWE Supercard one to let me know my tournament's about up uh, coming to my watch. And of course, Twitter is the biggest thing. Text messages. I love that absolutely anything that pops up a notification will come to this. Like some surprising stuff, you know, um, like, well, tell me app, like it, it throws me when I'm like, your apps have been updating. I'm like, well, that's, that's not right. Um, <laughs> I found a Twitter client on here called, I think it's Tweeble. Um, I like that. I like, I, I, I set my, uh, quick buttons on here to go to Swarm. Uh, it's kind of nice to like check in and you know I'll let it load the app and you maybe I'll go order my food or something and I look back and it's like oh cool I'm checking in at you know Chipotle or whatever right. Uh, that's been nice to kind of get back into that process. Um, also, and my other ones just set for the music app because you know again I kind of just put this thing in my pocket, put my phone in my pocket, uh, pull up Stitcher typically or maybe some music. Uh, today I was actually listening to iHeartRadio and catch up on Mikey and Big Bob. Um, but that music app will see anything, any music playing and, uh, it'll, it'll, you're able to control that, uh, you know, right from here. So again, I have that in my pocket. I don't have to worry about like, you know, I'm taking out trash and I'm like, I don't want to touch my phone. You know, that thing goes to my face, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'll hit the button on my watch, you know, that seems to make a little more sense. I don't feel like so icky about it or, or maybe my hands are wet and I don't want to pull out my phone and deal with that. But this thing. That, that's fine, you know. Um, so it really kind of opens that up. I feel. Uh, Did you set up? Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Because the one thing that I never set up because I was worried about being inundated with junk um, was the email. Because it'll no, it'll, no, just because, every, just because my philosophy on email. I'm trying to make sure okay. email is not a responsive thing; that it's a check-in thing. Okay. Um, I've turned. So, yeah, I never, I never did that either. But I wondered what it would be like. I feel like you're. It would just constantly nonstop. Right, bugs. right. Because you're be like, really? I just got mad because I just saw a uh, Groupon come to my watch, you know, mm-hmm. or, or something stupid like that, you know. It, it, no, no. The email, uh, the big personal philosophy I'm trying to buy into is email is not responsive. Me- email is a check-in uh, function because if che- if email becomes like instant messaging, uh, you know, they, it's not going to work. It, it's, you're not going to be. It's just a stress thing. At that point, right? right. I don't know. I totally agree. I, I understand. I understand. For certain people's jobs, they need to, you know, uh, be that responsive to it. Which I think you know, that's a whole other kind of debate right there. Um, but no, but like like tweets, you know, or you know, some Facebook messages that there was like, yeah, okay, I'll respond to that, you know, um, you know, stuff that you want to you want to know when it comes in uh, works out really well. Snapchats. I never paid attention to Snapchats before. <laughs> um, apparently I get a lot of Snapchats. You guys are weird out there. Um, but anyways, uh, but no, it's, uh, but again, it's, it's, it's the right watch for right now. Um, I'm hearing a lot about Android where, and actually Alex Carr is in the chat room was sharing at the beginning of the show about Pebble watch. And there is a, uh, sh- sh- See, I'm pointer there. Uh, they actually set up that Android Wear notifications, if you have an Android phone, can now come to Pebble. Mm-hmm. So if you want that kind of experience, but just on this watch, instead of paying 200 bucks for one, um, that's a possibility. You know, it's not going to look as nice. It's, it's it's a Pebble watch. But it's, again, mm-hmm. it's enough, you know, versus like, you know, Android watch that you will have to charge every night. It's nice to not have to worry about that. Um, the games are crap on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played with the. I, I, would, I wouldn't, but who wants to game on any small screen like that's that? That's true. Personally, that's true. I've had fun. Uh, I've been uh, coordinating my watch face with what T-shirt I've been wearing a little bit. <laughs> um, like uh, I have, you know, just have I just have like a small selection of them, and I oh, I'd be like, well, I'm really kind of rocking this Ninja Turtle shirt today. Or this hoodie or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to put a Ninja Turtle on here. Or, hey, we're going to a wrestling show. I'm going to throw up 
uh, I don't know. I found a Dean Ambrose watch face. Like that, like that, that seemed like the oddest one. Like there's a John Cena one, but there's like a Dean Ambrose and it has his face and everything. I'm like, all right, that's a little weird. <laughs> um, but they, they got about everything on there as far as that goes. Um, app wise, I got Pandora that interfaces nicely. Uh, also adds the, uh, you know, the, thumbs up thumbs down actually tiny bird does work as well as tiny bird flappy bird what would you think play <laughs> um so but anything else that like needs more than two buttons gets a little ridiculous um, do you have any apps that you're running on your phone that are then interfacing other than Pan- not the main other than app? pandora pandora and swarm really Okay. Um, Cause there's because I actually I'll have to see if I can somehow transfer these to you. Um, I actually purchased Smartwatch Pro and okay. Smartwatch Plus and Pebble Snap. Okay, I'll have to look into those. And pe- pe- like Pebble Snap will let you set your phone up, mm-hmm. and you can actually use your watch to take a picture. To, okay. To trigger the trigger the the photo, um, and actually I think one point in time they were actually transmitting the photo that the camera was seeing on the watch face, obviously in a very black and white pixelated manner. Right. You could see that you were in frame and it allowed you to use not the front facing camera, but the back facing camera, which was nice. Nice. Um, Smartwatch plus had like camera access, weather access, stock access, um, an additional music screen, reminders, find my phone screen, which was pretty cool. Um, as long as you were connected to your phone, if you couldn't find it, you could actually hit it and the phone would like alert. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can somehow transfer these to you. Nice, nice. Yeah. So that that's uh, like the smartwatch plus that's more like a watch face, right? It's a watch app. It's a watch app. But it, but it's so you. You download the full application. There's a smartwatch plus application on your phone. That's its hey. own standalone app. Okay. And then there's actually a button that says install watch app. Uh huh. Switches to the pebble app to install the smartwatch plus app. And then you come back into the phone app and you can do additional there's actually, I forgot about this because I disabled them all when I had it. There's a Bitcoin, current Bitcoin value and Bitcoin screen. Yeah, I'm listening There's a GPS this. screen. Huh. And there's an HTTP request screen where you can do like custom HTTP this, this web is, calls. This is not user friendly. Like, i got to point this out. Like, yeah. This is, this is like if you really want to get in and tinker with this, um, it's just a lot of on switches it looks like. Yeah. Um, but no, that that's crazy. You can get it on Cydia as well. You can get it on what? Oh, Cydia. Yeah. I bet you the app. I bet you the app does a little more because they probably can get around things that Apple won't, probably. won't allow them to do. Probably. That's awesome. I will have to check some of those apps out. But no, it's really kind of uh, I've integrated pretty much into my life. Uh, I did. Uh, I, th- I thought I broke it for a moment. I, I reached between a computer down here and it caught it. And uh, snapped off like this part of it, but I realize it's just a watch band. I can always just replace the watch yeah. band. So, but it seems pretty rugged, you know. Uh, I don't think I would have been so good with like a steel or something that you know I, I'd probably be scratching up pretty good. But it seems to hold up pretty well, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty rough on stuff. So, yeah, I'm clumsy. That's big. That's a big part. Um, awesome. So uh, with that, uh, hey Katie, you did a trip as well, and you ran into yes. some interesting stuff, right? I did. I got to see, um, speaking of unicorns, I got to see an Amazon Fresh van. Ooh. So, I know. So exciting. Uh, it was a delivery. We were staying at uh, one of our friend's apartments out in uh, Philly, Center City. Well, about that area. And um, they were getting a delivery from Amazon Fresh. Nice. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> and um, the other thing I saw was that we went to... Uh, Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, it's one of the oldest uh, penitentiaries. It was open in what 1890 something, uh, and it ran till 1971. And it's this very old place. We got to take a tour, and it, it actually Al Capone was there for a while. Nice. It's, it's that kind of big deal. And one of the things they had was a charging station for your iPhone, or your, any your actually any of your phones. There was uh, several, and they were individual docks 
where you could plug your phone into a, the charger and there was a key so you could lock it in there and leave it there for a little while and come back to it later. So there's like these little mini lockers with chargers nice. in this very, very old prison, <laughs> which I thought was really cool that they were that innovative. That would be that would be really nice for like comic book conventions. Mm -hmm. oh. Any any of those things where you want you need to recharge, but you don't want to have to stand at the charging station the whole time. Here, and I got your Pe picture up as well. I say even Penguin Games, we have those charging stations, but it's hard to use it because you're missing the game because you're waiting for your phone to charge. If you mm, could just leave right. it go for even you know what period or whatever, and just come back to it with a key. It'd be fantastic. I just, I just love this thing. I had never seen anything like this. Nice. Well, I'm trying to think. Someone at CES even announced they have a portable battery that um, I think will fully charge an iPhone 6 in 15 minutes. Very nice. Nice. So even if you could, even if you could get it in there for 15 minutes, your phone would be fully charged. Uh, and Katie, you, you, you said you ran you ran into some Yik Yak uh, fun out there too, oh, right? Yes, I did. No, well, there, the first Yik Yak fun was I, I saw that uh, Drexel University was actually using it for security alerts. Um, a, a lot of schools, like I know Point Park for sure, uh, they send out alerts either by email or text message that say, you know, if something happens near campus, if there's a robbery or some sort of crime, they alert you. Yeah. Well, Drexel University actually posted um, that they had an emergency alert and they used the Yik Yak to get it out to the students. So that was my first exciting yik yak moment. And then when I got back into town, I had my second exciting yik yak moment, which um, if you remember it at the end of last year, or our last show, I talked about um, people using yik yak to advertise sneakily. And Uber, of course, was the first advertisement that I've seen on yik yak. You know, nicely settled between an ad, or a question for some cocaine, and I forget what the other picture was. <laughs> Uh, like seriously, uh, uh, seriously, D, I'm out. I F town, ready to pay top dollar coke. No, it's actually nestled between two coke, uh, okay. uh, yik yaks, and because the next one's I j I want cocaine. So, um, yeah, the, the Uber ad actually says, "Let Uber be your private chauffeur tonight. Get your friend your first ride free up to twenty dollars when you sign up using promo code blah blah blah. Have fun tonight." So nice. there you go. Nice. Yeah, I was having some fun uh, reading those the other what the other night, uh, driving through uh, West Mifflin. I think uh, those got interesting. So I, I want to play with it. I actually started after after you sent me that. I was wondering, is like maybe we should start like yik yakking. Like, hey, we're doing a podcast here. Da 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 da. da you know, hey, we're in town. Da da da. da you know, have fun with that. You know, um, but uh, I don't know. It, 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 this yik yak thing is not going away. Mm -mm. And <laughs> 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 awesome well big news over we have several weeks of news we got ces all kinds of stuff coming out there I, i'm sure we'll, we'll poke at uh kind of whatever the big things were uh out of out of that um i'm trying to share as much as i can that that seems interesting uh but you know a lot of end of the year stuff uh a big one patreon which we we run on patreon with the wrestling mayhem show uh, we have one available for this show if you guys want to contribute through there and of course a, a big one is uh you know tom Merritt with uh the tech daily tech news show and uh court killers of course uh they really kind of jump started this about a year ago and of course it's it's you can you know uh, become a patron of the arts of whatever it is uh, our friend Walt Ribeiro uh he's actually doing a patreon as well to do his his music his orchestral music um but over the year uh, patreon has uh, support jumps to more than more more than 3700% in 2014 to 10 million dollars that's incredible wow. um so it, it's the next you know uh, they were uh, the one show I was listening to again with Tom Merrill was talking about they need their their Kickstarter moment where somebody like uh, their Veronica Mars moment right uh, where somebody big needs to jump on this and maybe like do an album or something uh, as a patron a Patreon supporter or something like this right um, but it's it's I we've seen tip jars in the past we've seen um, you know YouTube since as uh, uh, started. Uh, kind of baiting a a sort of tip jar kind of system um have you guys seen much buzz from this i don't know if you guys listen to a lot of the same stuff i do uh but it feels like like 
everywhere you look, uh, somebody started a new project and trying to put it on Patreon. I'm seeing stuff for Patreon. I'm seeing stuff for Kickstarter still. I mean, I'm still mm-hmm. seeing it kind of spread around. I wouldn't right. say it depends project to project. Everyone's going to one place. And but. it depends project to project. I, don't, I would never even consider like kickstarting a, sh- a, a podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we kind of, even it, when we did try the Kickstarter, it was like, well, kickstart us and we'll do the first six shows or something like that, right? Uh, of the show we were trying to do. Uh, but because you weren't making potato salad because we weren't making <laughs> potato salad it, it was like for that one-off thing like the pebble wash like uh like the cast ar like like oculus vr right uh like you mm-hmm. pay us this they'll get us to this point and you get a thing you know it, it's very i i i i've i've put in for comic books and they send me a digital comic you know or a t-shirt or something like that uh Versus the Patreon is something where it's like, hey, we're going to make this thing and we're going to keep making this thing and you're going to keep getting benefits as long as you're supporting us in this thing. And I think that works mm-hmm. out really well, you know, and and I love the concept. They say, well, you're our boss. You pay into this. You are our bosses because we don't have advertisers or, or something like that. Right. Or we're trying to supplement the advertisers. So you have a heavier voice, you know, in, in what we're trying to do here. Um, and I think that's really cool, uh, uh, you know kind of utilizing those 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 niche crowds that we that we have you know um and and letting people put money where the their money where their mouth is you know um and really kind of we expect these things to be free with the podcast and everything but again uh or on youtube or anything like that and and you know maybe advertising jumps in there but maybe going back to like hey you know support the things that you dig you know um so I, I love the kind of culture shift that's kind of happening along with this too. Good to see something like this doing really well. So, um, Alcatel, I've never heard of this before. Now, uh, looks to undercut everyone with cheap new smartwatches. Uh, these look fancy for one thing. They're uh, it, go ahead. I was gonna say they do. The screen on them and the pictures looks actually quite impressive. <laughs> tremendous um, go ahead yeah no go ahead no, uh, they're a budget phone maker um and they're 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 around they're round watches that look similar to the moto 360 although you don't have the flat tire effect if you're you're concerned about that uh but they they uh but they're going to be coming in i think i saw 150 dollars for these ones they're, they're full color smart watches um they connect to android smartphones to monitor daily activity etc cetera, etc cetera. um here it is this is your this is going to be your everybody's going to have a smart help fitbit has a smart watch version of it um and you're going to see all these alternatives come out you know uh samsung i really felt were kind of kind of sticking their neck out there when they had their versions what well, they've had like three or four versions this year alone right um but you know i i think uh that this this is everybody trying to get theirs in there and be the anti-apple i think uh as, as that debuts here early this year so um i don't know what do you think what, do you think do you think any of this is, will be worthwhile you know i mean we are like you know you and i both now have an experience with pebble um you know, is do you think the price point it, uh, it matters for the getting just the, that that little bit of functionality? If, if Android showed us anything, the price point matters. Yeah. Um, uh, now the question becomes: Can they get to a seventy-five dollar or a a lower price point than sub 150 i think i think for you to see penetration and everybody to have one of these on their wrist i think you have to hit that sub hundred dollar mark yeah um uh to me 150 i mean you're the, don't get me wrong the color screen looks really really good um and coming in at the price close to the what the pebble is um i think is great what I don't know is what are you, what kind of battery? I think the thing though is when you look at your Pebble, imagine having to charge it after eight hours. I think that's imagine a big killer. Not t- lasting the whole day. Well, look at, and that's right. Go ahead. 
look at look at the discussions you're having with your with your the, the Google Glass, and this is what I struggled with too yeah. with the with the device too. Was man, okay, I can put this on, and then then what if you have that on your face? You don't have backup glasses, and I'm walking around with a dead piece of hardware on my face, you know, or I'm walk right. or in the other case, I'm walking around with a dead piece of hardware on my wrist. You know, which is, again, mm-hmm. a little bit easier to put in your pocket, but you're the, you know, that's not so much attached to like, I can't see, you know, uh, right. without these things. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, that that's a huge turnoff that there's even a possibility of, you know, and even like the Android ones, uh, you know, again, some people have used it, they're like, well, it's to the point with after some updates where uh, it lasts the day and like half of the next so if i forgot to charge it overnight i still get a little bit of use of it you know when i get up and have to go somewhere right um so yeah that, that that's a huge problem and that that's kind of why i kind of sidestepped even the idea of the apple watch because you know that's let's hope they do the day you know as, as much yeah, as I'm interested. so so obviously the pebble the pebble doesn't go to sleep so right. if you put the pebble down that watch face is going to stay up and running. Right. Um, my quite my question is going to be with the and I'm guessing I, I think I'm going to predict Apple's going to get over a day, and the way they're going to do it is with the accelerometer in there. Until you raise up your wrist, it's not going to turn on the screen. That that makes sense because you gotta think of it. If you're like your pebble is on all the time, how much of that time that it's always on do you actually have eyeballs on it? Right. So you, and and the whole thing about the way that they're they, they're the notification is even gonna tap. Mm-hmm. It's, it's gonna feel like it's tapping you on the wrist. No, well, I think obviously it's gonna depend on the amount of of notifications you get as well. Um, and the the pebble vibrates. Yeah, I um, mean it's getting good battery life, but everyone's saying that the battery life is is based on screen uptime. Right now, what I don't know about the Android devices is if you put that device down, does the screen stay active? Right. So, so in here, so we're talking about okay. So there's that okay, you turn it off and and and, and you save power. But I'm sitting here like my my arm's kind of extended and 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 like I like that I can look down and see that last notification. I can see the time without like if I'm sitting here with my arm just sitting here and I have to do something with my hand, you know, to get this thing to pop up. You know, I I think that's going to be a big annoyance factor for people that want to use that. You know, people want their watch to be a watch, you know, just like, you know, with our smartphones, my smartphone has to at least do the phone thing good before we go anywhere else. My watch at least has to be a good watch. You know, I can't look at what was the the, and and the Motorola, whatever the screen display is in the Motorola X, the initial one. Mm -hmm. It only took electricity to power the areas of the screen. Right actually displaying something so if the, is that the ips screen? i can't i don't know all the screen technologies i apologize but they use a technology like that where it's only i'm i'm they're not going to go into this with it with an eight hour or 12 hour battery life there's no way so there's something there's going to be some magic behind this i just don't know what it is yet hmm. and obviously android or or Google Wear started off with a short battery life, and they've been able to increase that over time. If there's anything Apple's taught us is they have the ability to really stretch that battery life. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, and maybe it's just because I want one, but um, I'm hoping that it's going to be an over... For me, it, it's going to have to be over probably... It's going to have to be over an 18-hour battery life. I would be okay with plugging it in and then charging it nightly. Mm-hmm. If it can't last but me you, from... But you got to get through that. you got to get through that unusually yeah. long day, you know, sometimes. Yes. So and it sucks if you're, you're stressed, you have an unusually long day, and then your watch dies for the last two hours on your drive home. You know? Yeah. Anyways, hey, you got some other stuff I, I want to kind of poke at here, especially this one, because I have something related to it. Tell me what Nest is doing. So Nest has announced 
additional partnerships and support. Now, keep in mind, that's got bought by Google, um, but they are making additional third-party partnerships. And those partnerships are with smart lock companies like August and Kivo um, mm -hmm. and Unikey. You got um, lighting like Insteon, Philips Hue. I'm not sure what Omatello is. Um, Lutron, I think, is a is a, a power and, and lighting. Um, LG Smart Home Appliances. Um, the one that I found interesting and it, automatic, oh. like your driving assistant. Yeah, which I've talked about here on um, the show. That that that's the thing that goes on my OBD port and it interfaces with my phone. Or yeah, yeah, my phone to like kind of give my driving stats and let me know if I'm heartbreaking and stuff like that. Right. Right. So I, I find it interesting is when you start thinking about how they could kind of bounce off of each other. You, yeah. you, you lock your door and you leave and mm -hmm. you jump in your car. It knows you're away from your house because the automatic yeah. kicks on. Yeah. So the, now your house cools down. Like they, they turn the heat down. They do whatever. Or you're on your way home. And it picks up the fact that you're on your way home. It either heats or it turns, pumps up the air conditioning, things of that nature. Even, even um, if, if you have a smart refrigerator from LG, you can set it to go into energy saving mode as soon as you leave the house. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's going to do the same thing with Philips Hue. Yeah. Is that if you left lights on, there's going to be certain lights that you can tell it to just turn this off. This is that interconnectedness that's going to really kind of bend the stuff to our mm -hmm. will. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and, and that's the thing I'm actually seeing coming out of CES is there's a lot of everything smart home. Mm -hmm. That's not that to me. That's not a TV. Mm -hmm. um, to your, your question about Uma Tello, it's actually a handset maker. Um, and it's, oh, it's on the wrong computer. Um, so I guess your phone actually, it looks like it does video phone. Interesting. I thought we were beyond that, but actually, man, no, video not. phones here, isn't it? Like that happened, and we didn't even see it. Yeah. Remember, it's like, all on our cell phones. Yeah, it's all on our. It's all FaceTime. It's all Google Hangout. My mom FaceTimes with me. Mm -hmm. This happened. Um, it's not as widespread, you know, or, or anything like that. You have to have a special phone, but it's it's completely here. It's only going to get more. For like, I, I can imagine that becoming like a standard that cell phones just have, and maybe in ten years from now, you know, and, and can call any other cell phone, which I guess who knows. Hangout kind of does that already, but anyways. Yeah, hang, Hangout does that. You have Skype. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ones out there that, that would do that. Right, right. Uh, a couple of cool things I saw over our break here. Um, uh, just a couple uh, uh, quick little things I saw people sharing. I just want to kind of uh, throw out there. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, I Justine was sharing on Instagram um, a smart thermometer. It's the uh, Kinsel World Smartest th Thermometer. Uh, it you know, it's a thermometer just interfaces with your phone from the looks of it. Um, so uh, that that's kind of fun. It kind of goes to our kind of health kit kind of idea a, a little bit. Uh, I saw one too that was a uh, baby pacifier that would take take temperature and do other kinds of monitoring nice. for for a kid. That's, I that's, that's still that's still blows me away at that Verizon thing when they talked about like the personal like the baby the baby. Uh, uh, personal cloud stuff like that you can put monitors mm -hmm. on your kids and stuff like that still uh, kind of blew my mind that there was like a whole market around that too. So, um, Chilla, when, did you get digital diapers yet? I do not. No, <laughs> I didn't even know they existed. Put that on your Google Glass. I can see the app for that. You pop up on your glass. <laughs> it's time to change. It's just a little. It's you know the little the the, the poop emoticon with the face. Like that just pops up in the corner of your glass. Be like, whoop. Time to change the diapers. Like, oh, dude, that makes smooth. You just need a diaper with like a um, a, uh, a, a, a a humidity. No, no, not humidity, but like a, a like a water uh, sensor. You know, a wet sensor in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you that's go. That's the one thing. That, that's the one thing I'm surprised that I'm seeing a lot of is there. There must be a lot of people that have issues with like randomly flooded basements. Right. Because that's the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of sensors for is right. is water sensors. Um, I know. Well, I've I've seen it a couple of times. Like one, like the uh, the the tub gets gets stopped up, and and my laundry 
water overflows into the studio area. That's happened to me a couple of times, for instance. That'd be nice to know, you know, mm-hmm. um, or, or the sewage backs up, you know, um, like that's that it's completely a, a problem. Or if you're in a place that floods a lot, you kind of want to know. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, cool. Kind of keep an eye on it. Um, also, uh, Jane Pitt on Twitter, uh, Pit Girl. She's a little famous around here. Uh, she was sharing uh, one. I always like seeing, you know, as we've talked about plenty of times about companies here in town doing really cool stuff. Um, this was one uh, created in Pittsburgh. Puzzlets by Digital Dream Lab uh, teaches kids programming without even uh, thinking about it. Actually, there's another one of these, too, they were talking about on MacBreak this last week, too. Um, that's like, uh, this, this is more, uh, it, it looks like one of those kind of, uh, if you guys have seen the leapfrogs or the educational kind of Android tablets that you can find at Walmart, um, it looks like that kind of device. And they're like these little puzzle pieces that go in there. Um, but no, I saw a similar game. Do, Missy, do you remember the name of that one? Some robo Roco Ico or something like that. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure it's linked over there on the, I'll try to bring up the, uh, uh, Mac break knows to, to pick that it was a pick of the week um but these i love the idea of these apps that are are, are, are puzzles or you know they're teaching kids like the logic and the reasoning behind programming you know at a young age um oh that's not bitly that's not right um but uh but no but again cool to see something happening uh, uh here in town and that's again it's digital dream lab if you want to find out more about that uh their website is digitaldreamlabs.com uh, explore that a little bit and uh, anything else you want to touch on what's Plex going uh, doing here uh, at CS- so, CS? Plex um, which I'm a hu- I, I don't actually use it but I'm a huge fan of, of what they offer um, especially because I was an old XBMC user and, and things of that nature um, Flex has kind of like a you can pay for their service mm-hmm. um, as well as they have some unlimited um music pass type stuff, but they're getting HD music videos from Vivo. Um, they're doing mood and genre driven pay- playlist and listening recommendations, which I thought was pretty cool. And obviously they've always seemed to be the best in class for format and streaming support. Oh yeah. Um, supporting, supporting more random compression. Um, what'd you call that? Not out. Is it algorithm? Um, transcoding. More than uh, more than anything else I've ever seen, they're they're kind of like the VLC. Um, I've always liked the look and feel of their their app and their their server side and everything. So uh, um, the other thing, what did they do? They're doing they're kind of going after the music recognition as well. So they're they're doing audio fingerprinting and some music recognition, which is pretty cool. Nice. So this is all stuff they announced at, at CES. So they're not they're not. Um, laying down and, and kind of just letting things fall by the wayside. They're definitely picking up what they do and kind of moving it forward. And it surprised me because Carla actually came home from work and she said, have you ever heard of Plex? And I'm like, yeah, why are you talking about Plex? <laughs> and she's like, because there's a bunch of people at work. They all have it. And, and I've been surprised too that the Plex, Plex is going after every client that it can. There's Android, iOS, clients there's a there's a samsung client if you have a samsung tv there's xbox clients i mean they they have their client is everywhere so it's it's pretty cool um i don't know check them out if if you've never looked at plex or their website or anything definitely check them out awesome awesome well on that note we should get out here i did uh, look at the time gotta get out here for the gaming guys and uh but real quick i want to plug uh some people around town of course, the hardware store. We talked to Josh Lucas a while ago uh, over there in Allentown. Have a lot of events going on, including they're having a uh, GSD session uh, at the Livermore Megabits. They're talking with the company here, uh, talking about overcoming roadblocks and delivering products and entrepreneurism. Let's build an incubator. I'm really kind of curious about this. They want to build kind of a crowd. This is our incubator, tech incubator kind of thing. I, I kind of kind of want to go see just what the what the pitch is on that one also bill gill pittsburgh i believe their next meeting is uh next wednesday uh just go look up uh, bill gill pittsburgh uh on facebook and i think they have a website as well first thing that pops up in google um and i think that's all tech i don't know if you guys have anything else on your uh radar coming up in, in the next few weeks 
Microsoft kind of is an announcement towards the end of the month. Uh, and, and then look out for a surprise Apple announcement anyway. I'm first. guessing we're gonna hear something. I'm guessing I, I think someone took a note out of the out of the not going to CES playbook. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think either towards the end of CES or right after we're just gonna be inundated with with massive amounts of announcements from from your Google and your your Apple and, and your yeah. Microsoft. So I, Apple could happen anywhere between now and March, to be honest. So you, you, th the, you mean an announcement or a sale or, or something going on sale? An announcement. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna see it. I think we're gonna see announcements. I'd be surprised if they waited all the way till March. Mm -hmm. If it's March, I'm saying it's in the first. That's my that's my far reaching idea. So, all right, uh, Chilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitters. I hear you want to start a blog this year. I do want to start a blog this year. That's my goal. Nice. And, I, and I want to become more active on... I'm not a good LinkedIn person. Do, do, I, who I, is a good LinkedIn person? I feel person. like I need to... You, I, I, feel like, like, well, I, I see all these people that are so active on there, and I'm like... Yeah, but... I they, just can't, can't I don't, get into this. I feel like you have to have an alternate, ulterior motive in order to put focus in a LinkedIn. I don't know. Uh, it's just like it's not, which I guess that's the whole point, isn't it? But um, no, I, I that's the silver. I, I make a point to, uh, for one thing, like like make sure I post one thing a day. I'm like, okay, is there something interesting that I worked on or or that I shared? You know, at least one thing that day. The other thing I was doing, and, and I don't know if this applies to you uh, in the same way, but I tried to check in on my profile, which I consider that as my resume now. Um, and say, okay, is there anything I've done I should add on this? Is there something completed I can put on here? You know, um, especially since I've worked with so many clients and projects and stuff. That again, that kind of works for me. I don't know how that translates for you. I feel like maybe your profile kind of sits there because you have one job, but I don't know if there's anything shareable. You know what I mean? Well, so, that, and that's where I get, doing doing mobility for work mm -hmm. and talking mobility here. And, 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 and like a blog yeah. about it, it kind of upplays that. Yeah that subject matter expertise true type yeah i mean thing, it really so. just an extension of your discussions here join it i the, i have not found a group i like they all seem very spammy i've joined a couple video ones a couple podcasting ones and I, and it's just like it, I, when i make a mistake to comment on something there's never any conversation and i just get spammed with everybody else's stuff that just is inane in the long run um but i don't know if anybody knows a good podcasting like a legit good podcasting or uh uh, the podcasting, a uh, couple of podcasting groups on Google Plus are really, really good, actually. Especially the, um, um, oh, can't remember the name of it right now. Katie, what do you got going on at K Dutters on the Twitter? <laughs> hey, got a Fitbit. Got wait, a Fitbit? Wait, got a Fitbit. Got a Fitbit. Okay. So uh, that's my, well, one of my goals is to be more active mm -hmm. because I've become a slug. <laughs> But I'm also finding myself drinking a lot more water because it keeps track of that. But then I'm also um, using the facilities more often. So more porta potty pictures. Yes, I'm taking porta potty pictures. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Keep it going. Are you using it for sleep tracking? I have. Uh, just kind of. I, I'm not getting too wrapped up into it. I think it's fun. I mean, like it's. It's, it's there's a lot of information there that I'm like I don't want to get too far into. I'm excited about steps and drinking water and I'm kind of concentrating on that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the sleep tracker is interesting because it's like oh you were up this many times. I was like yeah I was. <laughs> it, it, it's funny when I say it. My mom's my um, cat likes to jump in bed with me and then leave and come back. So I could tell you what what time of night and morning she's been in and out because it's like oh you were restless <laughs> this time. <laughs> uh, the fun part is when when Missy forgets to turn off the sleep mode. And then, you know, just giant pink bars for like the entire morning that she's been up, you know. So, uh, you slept horribly. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. How are you even awake? Um, but no, that, that's awesome. I, I've just been using the Fitbit app on my phone. And, and mm -hmm. the only problem is when I know I've went and did a whole bunch of stuff around the house, but I left the phone on my desk. Well, that's that's the thing is it's with me all the time. So it's right. awesome. And I, I, I took my Fitbit and um, the Apple Health app on my phone for a walk on the trail and I was impressed that the mileage was within a tenth of a mile between nice. the two of them, nice. which is pretty exciting. Awesome. So, so, what, I'm interested in, this is what the, the one thing about 
I'm interested in a device that can, I, I am interested if the Apple device can go more than 18 hours or whatnot. Um, I'm interested from the aspect of, I feel like there's certain mornings I get up and I did not get good sleep. And it, you ever have those like flashbacks later on in the day? You're like, oh, I had a dream about that. I'm now having flashbacks that I actually woke up in the middle of the night, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like, was I dreaming that I woke up or did I actually wake up? Wow. So I'm interested from the aspect. I'd like to have something that kind of tells me what my sleep pattern mm -hmm. was like. So I can kind of confirm and gauge, am I just going insane slowly or, <laughs> or did I get bad sleep last night? You got something going on there. That's, 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 I haven't heard of that one, you know. So, but anyways, um, on that note, hey, at Sorgatron on the Twitters, please check us out at awesomecast.net. Uh, subscribe to us on all the links over there for iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. Join us here Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. East, no, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Wow. Uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at awesomecast or awesomecast on Facebook, Google Plus. Converse with us. We, we share stories throughout the week, for instance. Um, thanks to Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for checking out, doing our Twitters all night and doing the notes for us uh, for this and some other podcasts throughout tonight. And, you, and uh, everybody hop in the chat room. You've been our awesome chat room uh, with us all night. Bobby, Alex, buddy. I see a buddy. Uh, Kraus, uh, Juggalo John. Oh, we didn't get to Juggalo John Studio. Go search for drone boning and have fun. Uh, There's always next week. It's always next week. It's put off again. I shared that with everybody in the Mayhem hangout last night. That was good. I was just like, guys, just watch this and make sure your kids are away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> drone boning. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.